Hello everyone. My name is Joelle and welcome to this 30-minute yin yoga sequence for hip pain and bursitis, which we'll be doing entirely on our backs today. I'm not using any props or equipment for today's class and you don't need to either, but if you would like to have a few pillows or yoga blocks nearby then please do so. So we're going to get started. Let's come onto our backs now and our first posture will be what is called banana pose. So pick the hips up, shift them just a few inches over towards the right side of the mat. And then we can stretch both legs out long towards the left side of the mat. And you might choose to cross the right ankle over the left. And then to complete our banana shape, we'll bring the or part of the body towards the left as well. And you could keep the arms down by your sides, or you can do what I'm choosing to do, which is clasping opposite elbows above the head. If you are new to yin yoga, this is a style where we hold postures for several minutes, usually anywhere between two and seven minutes. And today we'll be holding our postures around three minutes each. So this style is much slower and more meditative, giving us a chance to turn inwards and really tune into the physical sensations of the body. While most forms of yoga and exercise tend to target our muscles, in yoga targets our connective tissues like our fascia and our ligaments, so it's wonderful for flexibility or for releasing blockages, releasing pain as we're aiming to do today, and also promoting better energy flow throughout the body. And I'll try to leave a lot of silence throughout this sequence to give us all a chance to be with our own thoughts, to feel into the mental and physical sensations that we're experiencing and to allow any tension, any discomfort, or any pain to simply melt away as we breathe. We can start to come out of that pose, just bring the body back to center. You might keep hold of opposite elbows here. And when you're ready, we can shift the hips towards the left this time as we bring both the upper body and the legs over towards the right side of the mat. Bringing our banana shape into the other direction. And again, your choice if you'd like to maybe cross the left ankle over the right this time. Or you could also just keep both legs long next to each other. And I would encourage you to close the eyes if you haven't already. Even keep the eyes closed for the entire duration of today's class. And just tune into the breath. Our breath is absolutely key to yin yoga. It's an opportunity to direct the breath into areas of our body that may need it the most. So perhaps today that's the hips. And it's also an opportunity to breathe through discomfort, to acknowledge discomfort and, and pain when it is present and ultimately through the breath to allow any discomfort or pain to let go over time.
we can release that now, coming back towards center, releasing the elbows if you had hold of them to bring the arms back along your sides. And then we can slowly step the feet in towards the body and bring the soles of the feet together to let the knees come open into our next posture, which is reclined butterfly or also called reclined cobbler's pose. And you could leave the arms by the side or perhaps bring both hands to the belly just to allow yourself to feel your breath. And this is one of those postures where perhaps if you did have some pillows or yoga blocks nearby and you would like to use them, you could place one under each thigh, just to allow for a little bit of extra support and relaxation, but it's not necessary, so you, you choose what feels best for you today. In yin yoga, we look for what is sometimes called comfortable discomfort, so it's all right to feel a little bit of a challenge, a little bit of unfamiliarity perhaps in these poses, but we're, we're never looking to push into pain, so find a level of intensity where you feel you can hold the posture and challenge your body just a little bit, but you're never pushing or forcing something that simply isn't right for you today. always an option to come out of a pose earlier if you need to, but do try to stay with me. Give yourself the opportunity to see how you feel by the end of this. And please do make sure to thank yourself for taking half an hour out of your day to recognize your pain and to do something about it. Something to take care of yourself you deserve it. Now let's bring the hands to the outer thighs just to help encourage our knees back up towards the ceiling. And we will come into our next pose. Let's cross the right ankle over the left knee. And you could simply stay here, keeping the sole of the left foot planted flat to the floor. If this is enough of a stretch already. Or you have the option of taking the left foot off the floor to bring the left knee in the direction of the chest and you might hold on with both hands behind the thigh or in the front of the left shin. Some of you might know this posture as reclined pigeon pose. In yin yoga this is usually called sleeping swan, and no matter what we call it, chances are you're feeling a pretty intense stretch now into the outside of the right hip, maybe into the right glutes. This is one of the very best postures for hip bursitis, and you might Recognize different variations from previous hip bursitis routines you may have tried on my channels. And once you're there, let's try to avoid fidgeting or moving around too much. Remember to focus on the breath, feeling the diaphragm and the ribs expand on every inhale. 
then with every exhale, feeling the navel melt down towards the spine. And you might think about making your exhales about twice as long as the inhales, just to help keep our nervous system relaxed. If you did have hold of the thigh or the shin, you can release that now with the hands. Or we're simply going to allow both legs to come over towards the left side. So keeping them in this position with the right ankle still crossed over the left knee, but just releasing them over so that the sole of the right foot and the outside of the left leg are now resting on the floor. Then you might keep the head turned straight up towards the ceiling, or you can turn it towards the right, maybe extending out through the right arm, or bringing the right elbow to a 90 degree angle. And you might also bring the left hand to the top of the right foot, holding on to that right ankle. So our fascia is a thin connective tissue, kind of like a spider's web that covers our bones, our muscles, our nerves, our internal organs, and it's all connected throughout the body. And when our fascia is underused, it can become less elastic and that can lead to stiffness or aches and pains. So by gently stretching in these yin yoga poses today, we're helping them get longer and stronger and we're releasing tension in, in these tight spots thanks to our longer holds today. And now let's start to come out of this pose. You can gently swing the legs back up to center. And we're going to cross them a little bit further now. So instead of having the right ankle over the left knee, we can slide that leg down, bring the right knee over the left knee. And again, you could keep the left foot planted to the floor in that position or you might start to bring both knees towards the chest. And you could hold on with both hands to the knees. Or if you'd like a little bit more here, you could bring the hands to the ankles or even to the outside of the feet, which is what I'm doing here. So again, experiment with what might best for you and your hips today. It's been shown that fascia needs at least 120 seconds, so two minutes to affect its elasticity, which is why yin yoga in general is one of the best ways to work on our flexibility. And by breathing deeply today into the 
fascia and other types of deep connective tissues were also promoting the flow of oxygen, promoting circulation throughout the body, and we're taking care not only of our physical health, but also our mental health as well. And yoga can help with stress, it can help calm our anxiety, and it's even been shown to help with feelings of depression. So let's release whatever we had hold of, maybe the knees or the feet. It might feel nice to just stretch both legs out long for a moment. Maybe give the legs a little shake here. And then we'll start to repeat that sequence of three poses on the other side. So let's bring the right foot flat to the mat and the left ankle crossed on top of the opposite knee. Choosing whether we'd like to stay here for today, or if we might like to bring the right knee in the direction of the chest, perhaps interlacing the hands behind the thigh, or in the front of the shin. And these types of postures might feel very different on the second side compared to the first side, whether we're more open or perhaps tighter on this second side. And that's completely normal. It's a good thing to notice about ourselves and our bodies. So no matter where you are on this second side, just give yourself permission to be still permission to rest, and permission to let go of whatever needs to be let go of. And we can let go of whatever we may have had hold of. I'm just going to bring both legs over towards the right now, still keeping that ankle over the knee. So the left foot and the outside of the right thigh are now touching the floor, or perhaps that foot is on a block or a pillow for a little bit of extra space. And there's an option to maybe turn the head in the opposite direction over the left shoulder. 
maybe extend that left arm or maybe bend the left arm, bringing the elbow to 90 degrees. It starts to feel difficult or even panicky to stay in these poses for this length of time. I'm going to encourage you to try coming back to the breath. And we're aiming for about 10 breaths per minute. One second in, and two seconds out on the exhale. So it's always an option to count the breaths, or to simply let the breath be what it needs to be as we rest and relax and restore in each of these postures today. Let's pick the legs back up, bring them to center, and we'll deepen that cross of the legs by bringing the left knee over the right knee now, possibly keeping that right foot to the floor, or else bringing the knees towards the chest, maybe clasping hands on top of the knees, or as we did on the other side, an option to slide the hands down the shins and hold the ankles or perhaps the outsides of the feet, if that's what you'd like to do today. This posture is called reclined shoelace pose in yin yoga. And if you're wondering how often to practice this sequence, yin yoga is safe to do every day, as long as it feels all right to you and your body. And if hip pain or bursitis is a problem for you, then I would suggest to start with this sequence once a week and to combine it with other sequences. I have several other 10 minute and 20 minute sequences for hip bursitis and hip pain. And when you're finished, do check out the description box below this video. I will link to all of them there as well as to an outline of a suggested four week program of how to Use all of these videos to address your own hip bursitis or hip pain. And of course, I would love to know how these sequences help you or make you feel, or if you have any questions. So please do leave me a comment below. And again, noticing if there's any difference in how we feel in this posture as compared to how we may have felt on the first side. You're doing wonderfully. We just have one more pose after this. So just keep the course. 
And let's release hold of the feet or the knees or whatever else we may have been holding on to. And take any little wiggles that might feel nice, extend the legs out. Might feel good again to give them a little shake or bring any other movements to any other parts of the body. And you can bring the arms to the sides, with the palms turned towards the sky. And once you've found a comfortable position here, let's find some stillness in this Shavasana, this final resting pose. Allowing any remaining tension to melt away as we bring both the mind and body to stillness. And I would encourage you, of course, to stay in this Shavasana for as long as you would like. I'll leave another few moments of silence here to close us out. Whenever you're finished, please do hit that like button if you enjoyed this class. And subscribe to my channel for two free videos every week. I truly hope that this sequence today brought you a sense of peace restoration. And I wish you all a very beautiful rest of your day. Thank you for practicing with me today.